Now, Paula, me, you mentioned in our last show when we were discussing the consequences of creators or council members who severely broke rules. And if they severely broke rules, some of the consequences were to get assimilated back into creation and source. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe uh, you had mentioned briefly, but hadn't talked about it, of course, is I believe you had that assimilation experience yourself at least once. <laughs> so, so please describe for us, um, if it's not too, you know, PTSD, describe the details of what occurs in that. And, you know, because some people go, oh, so then I'm just disintegrated, don't have any other options, but that's not necessarily true. Or did you have a chance to reevaluate and reincarnate? Like, I imagine there's so many options. So you want to talk a little bit about that? What happens? Uh, what it, what does it feel like when you get assimilated and then go from there? Okay. Well, I'm sure people are wondering why I got assimilated. <laughs> I was going to leave that up to you. Uh, let's just say that, um, well, we, we, we all know that I came to this universe for various reasons. Uh, it's very complicated. Let's just say that in certain timelines that have collapsed and no longer exist, I did very bad things. Very, very bad things. And to the point where I had to get reassimilated to um, Hanovian source creation. <laughs> Not this universe source creation, Hanovian source creation. So I went back to prime source. Uh which makes the, sense, though, because you're from there. Yeah, but the transgressions that happened was in this universe. Yeah. So, like I said, free will is a double-edged sword. It can either go bad or good. Um, so my anyway. guess is you killed a lot of people and destroyed a lot of things. To say the least. Yes. Yeah. And I'm going to leave it at that. Not to mention planets. Yep. Uh, oh. planets were the least <laughs> oh so we're talking destroying entire universes then. It, 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 it's a very long story it was oh, okay not very very good oh uh, bad creator no i went through down a very very dark path so okay. uh so i'm glad i get you after that <laughs> <laughs> yeah so <laughs> when you get fully assimilated you go through the universe that you currently reside in um all of your fractals all of them get completely decontaminated which means that they get wiped out they no longer exist you get decontaminated which means that no, any informational viruses or anything of the sort gets stripped from you and then you go back to the source of that universe's creation for its consciousness, because you are a part of it. So basically, your essence is the only thing that exists. You do not have a physical form anymore. Uh, the only physical form you have is basically a sphere, if you really want to get technical on the geometry. And then you go and assimilate into that consciousness. Everything you've ever experienced goes into certain places uh, also decontaminated so it cannot be infected by experiences or agendas so to speak and then from there I went into which basically at that point like you have an identity even at, at your highest consciousness your oversoul you have an identity you might not exactly have a great form but you have your own frequency your own identity when you get absorbed back into prime source consciousness uh you no longer are a single identity you are one in everything so you become a thought in in someone else's head basically that's it you're an emotion a thought a blip you exist sort of you exist in the sense that you exist to exist but you and you can have thoughts of your own and experience everything that that source creation is experiencing but you don't have a say in the matter you don't exist as a single identity anymore it's like a cell being 
uh, reconnected and reabsorbed after being cut off into to the grand scheme of things. Wow. So you no longer function as a single unit. You you function as a whole. Is that overwhelming? It becomes very natural. You lose your self, sense of self-identity. So you become basically part of the hive mind. Wow. Yeah. Now, the funny thing is, is that source is powerful enough to I single out you again and bring you back out if you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> which I'm I got sure. an, I got another chance at that so I know there's no time but how quickly were you did source pull you out again like approximately like is it that, I had no understanding of time when you're in there because it doesn't exist it was just it it ever doesn't. present now yep okay. ever present so talk about source contacting you tell us about that what what you're going yo di do di do di do di do di do So basically the council members of this universe, because we we know that there are certain councils that are outside of this universe, obviously. Yeah. Uh they're the ones who took me from the simulation out. Connected to they, the mortals, seven? Pretty much. Okay. Because I did get to the consciousness of the immortal, uh, of basically Hanova. But they had to take me out of this one first. I had to be assimilated to this one first and then go to Hanovian. And it's the same thing. Same principle. So. They do the assimilation in Hanova also if you mm -hmm. screwed up over mm -hmm. there? Okay. Yes. But you have to be cleansed from an experimental one. And then you went back to kind of your origin in a way. Correct. Your mothership. Correct. <laughs> Okay. Wow. This is beautiful to know, you know, different things like but that. It also puts some people in their freaking place too, because exactly. there's a lot of programs that are like, oh, well, now that we know how this works, we're going to do it. And I'm like, yeah, good luck with that, because it yeah. doesn't matter how powerful you think you are. If you're thinking you're getting beyond the creators of this universe, good freaking luck. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because many people listen to the information and they look like how they can use it for their own power. And uh, they're, they're in for some surprises that way. They have been manipulating the timelines and stuff for such things. But I'm like, guys, you don't understand. Like their firewall is impenetrable, literally. Yeah. So there's no way that you can get past it because they've been trying to use me to get to Source Nova and all this other shit. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not happening. I'm sorry. Not happening. <laughs> well, then they're also, they're so arrogant, addicted to power and all these other trips going on. They oh, don't, it's, it's they don't know when to stop. Yeah. But, but yeah, they're like, they, I know that they've been trying to use me to to get the coding to do that. And I'm like, guys, I am programmed not to have that coding for a reason. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter how many times you fractal me, you're not getting that coding. As long as we are on the subject of personal challenges, uh, I'd appreciate you sharing the rest of the story that we didn't get enough detail on or the public didn't get enough detail on of when you were lights champion atlantis when oh. the dark draco attacked you single-handedly took on four draco mother ships because you were the champion of light and dark draco king lucifer so you managed to destroy two of those draco mother ships mm -hmm. and then unfortunately you were shot and killed by a powerful device correct Correct. That was one of the uh, cannons, or should I say several of the cannons on, on uh, the ship. <laughs> okay, so I want you to start with that weapon because you got turned into a statue, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Go through the ocean thing. How long and uh, what that was like, how you're still sane from that, and how you eventually <laughs> broke free and hopefully... I think you've processed this enough that it's not too PTSD for you, is it? No, I, I'll, I'll be all right. So as we explained before, like when Dark, Dark Draco King Lucifer ended up coming and invading Earth, basically, after he got done with Mars, 
Uh, he had four mother ships that ended up coming to the original Atlantis, the one in the Bermuda Triangle, not the sister cities that were main hubs. I mean, there was a lot of hubs, but the, the three sister cities. Anyway, he ended up attacking us. I got everyone, you know, to get other people out of there. I was ordered to basically default Atlantis because we could not let them get a hold of the artifacts. We could not let them get a hold of the Citadel. And me being one of the several champions, it was not the only one. I was just the champion of light. There was other immortal sevens there who also had their own champions. Uh, I went, I was the first one to actually go and face the draconian threat. Everyone else was trying to get everyone off of Atlantis and get everyone to safety. So I ended up flying up there because I had wings and in front of all the four ships. Well, I ended up taking two of the ships down with the weapon that I had. It was a special Atlantean weapon that was made, completely made out of crystal. It was one of my swords. But because of the techniques that I can use and how I can ma manipulate energy, uh, it basically turned into a very strong uh, sword strike. <laughs> I also had my, my bow and arrow, but it was not the same bow and arrow as... Uh, the one that they destroyed Mars with. I, I, I'm not allowed to have that one yet. yet. So okay. I took the, I took two of those ships down, and fortunately, the draconian uh, technology back in those days still had a charge time for their cannons for the ships. And I, we're talking like four cannons that literally come together and make a huge blast of light and plasmic energy. It is literally a plasma ray. Anyway, when I got hit with it, uh, because of the way that tissue works, and just because I was a hybrid doesn't mean anything. It happens to humans too. Um, the way that the the DNA and everything pretty much works, there's a lot of silica and everything in our body. Well, if you hit certain energy frequency weapons to a person, you can actually turn them to stone. Completely. So this also has to do with like why we produce a lot of piezoelectric uh, energy in our bodies. And there's a lot of carbon in us too. So I ended up turning to stone and, well, the ocean was what was under me. <laughs> so I ended up taking a dirt nap in the ocean. Well, I can't say dirt nap because I was locked consciously into the statue for a couple thousand years before I decided to shard myself and get the hell out of there. Wow. Wow. How did you not go crazy? Who said I didn't? You know how long it took me to get enough consciousness to realize I wasn't dead and why I couldn't pass on to the afterlife? I was still alive. It's just I wasn't quite alive. It's like so, it's like being buried alive. Pretty much. I made friends with a squid and a mermaid, though. They were pretty cool. Oh, good. Did they know you were still alive? Both of them? Uh, kind of eventually i managed to get the ability to telepathically project again to talk to them so yeah there's a huge squid uh species um with a long name deca patera whatever huge giant thing they're so smart and they're super intelligent and uh, this one was kind of like it was only like 10 feet long <laughs> wasn't, wasn't but... super huge. very bioluminescent -y. But uh, like I said before, when for the Atlantean one, we had mermaid people live underneath Atlantis. Absolutely. They had their own city and everything down there. And to this day, they're still there. So they're the ones who were guarding the crystal pyramids or yeah. crystal pyramid, I should say. That's down there. in the. Are they, do they phase shift? Are they slightly out of our frequency? Uh... No, not really. They're they're pretty physical. Mm -hmm. they, they have abilities. It's just that they're not as dimensional as they used to be, especially with the veil put up. 
yeah. kind of degraded everyone just like a lot of other species so did they just you have telepathic conversations with them for 2000 years uh i don't i couldn't really tell you the time frame <laughs> all yeah. i know is i got bored and started to have uh reincarnations of myself so i can't exactly say how many times i fractaled myself because i ended up recovering a couple timelines i thought it was just bridget and apollo that i was my first one out of that but i'm starting to remember other timelines where i'm on the twin sister of earth that has the two moons and then i had a uh, timeline uh, lives over there as well so i may have fractaled more than just uh, apollo and bridget so basically a part of you remained in the statue mm -hmm. and you managed to uh fractal your consciousness to that... add timelines go ahead. go ahead sorry i interrupted you i didn't mean to oh you can interrupt me i'm irish <laughs> <laughs> so you were sitting there and god forbid we get bored eventually it's like you became very um self-reliant and you said okay i'm going to have a part of myself in the statue but i'm going to start separating fractalizing myself to go experience my other timelines and lifetimes so at least i'm doing something right right correct and how did that move to the apollo me we know now So this is this is where my paradox comes in. Okay. Um, okay, so the the one in the statue was my prime. That is the one that came from Hanova. Okay. Correct. And you were fighting in your celestial body then? Yes. I was fighting okay. in my celestial the body. The wings, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um and then when I fractaled myself off, you know, I became Apollo, which Apollo is still alive. Uh, Bridged obviously is dead. Uh, yeah, <laughs> only because she wanted to die. And then uh, my other lifetimes that I may have fractaled off with, I don't think any of them are alive anymore, at least not that I have know of. Uh, but because my consciousness was from the statue and I sharded from those, then most of those ones, except for Apollo, obviously is still alive. Um, and it could have been Apollo that this shard came from, 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 you know, cause they, they like to do the thing. It's very hard to describe because my prime consciousness is from another consciousness. So you remember how I was saying that, so like this is my oversoul and say that it that one has sharded like five or six times and then we get to this universe. For this universe's total experiment for all the timelines, I could have this one over here that has many, 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 many different fractals. Okay. Now for the same plane of existence, I could have this one over here, which would be another prime and there's only me that came down and this one has how many of our fractals the, the governments and everything else is doing but technically i'm still a prime does that make sense yep okay well at least so, to me right so all the other ones that are running around uh are not specifically from my consciousness i am one over here and so i only have down below which is me that's it or at least from my understanding so there's no part of you in the statue still no okay wow well you know it was so interesting when you said turn into stone because of the silica and crystal and we do have weapons that disintegrate matter and all that kind of stuff so um i remember insider simon parks once mentioned that it's not a good idea to have stone statues like little gnomes and stuff in our yards because demons and beings can reside in them. Well, I mean, they can reside in anything that they wish. It's just stone is made out of silica usually. And because of the properties of what silica can do, which is a, um, 
It is a property that takes harmonic frequency well. And so therefore consciousness can reside in it well. And if they think statues are bad, you should see your technology. <laughs> oh, the, what, the crystal technology you mean? No, I mean like your computer, your PlayStation, your, your, uh, your cameras, everything. Yeah. So what would you say to why some statues cry blood or tears? I mean, assuming that it is real and not CGI or anything else like right. that, there has been recorded ev evidence all over history about certain things. Um, it just really depends. If a statue does that physically, then the entity knows how to A, possess an object, and B, change the physics of that object on on the dimension that it currently resides okay. in takes a lot of energy a lot so i have a question that i want to make sure an answer from a subscriber who wrote in regarding the avatars being sent here to earth uh, and this person was curious is there a difference between avatars that are sent down to this experimental universe by a creator versus an avatar of an angelic Ah, I, that's a great question. Uh, it's a little complicated, but so an avatar that was brought down here by a creator, uh, it, it depends on the creator's intentions and what they are supposed to do down here. A lot of the times they get to keep their abilities, and assuming that they're talking about just being here on Earth in general. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they are. So... Being here on Earth in general, when you have when you are an avatar that gets sent down here, this means that you are usually not born on Earth. This means that you usually come into the area um, not within the system. Okay. You usually keep all of your abilities and you get to keep what you look like unless you want to shape shift to blend in. So Say, say the Archangel Michael decides to come down and interact with someone. He wasn't born here on Earth, okay? He, he was born elsewhere. He gets to keep all of his abilities. He might shapeshift his wings, uh, if for those who can see him anyway, to blend into everybody. And he just might be really handsome, charismatic, and, you know, people are going to be attracted to him. And then he can interact with whoever he wants. Having an avatar that, say, Michael had to, for some reason, fractal himself and come down here for whatever mission that might be a little bit more dangerous or he just doesn't have consciously time for, you know, he could come down here, be born into a body that is hopefully a good frequency for him because uh, he's a he's he's high energy boy and, you know do whatever it is that they need to do that body is not going to have all of his abilities okay it's hopefully he gets a body that has the ability to evolve well and quickly without dna decomposition from the energy that is his fractal so that he can maintain and get some of his abilities back that he needs to do to do his job but it's a huge difference of agenda, power abilities, and a whole lot of other factors. Because you might get bo be born into a body that isn't that great. So that fractal might become not to the expectations that you want them to be. And a lot of the times people won't call them. So they just let them live out their life. And then they have to fracture again. <laughs> so... What do you mean they have to fracture again and fall? They'll have to they'll have to create another fractal to go do the same mission and hopefully be born into a body that's uh, acceptable to their mission because life is unpredictable. You could have a really good body for your mission, whether it be health, an accident, you know, some trauma that ends up blocking you. It, it just life happens, and so that fractal might not be 
you know, coherent enough to complete the mission. So they'll have to fractal again and then get born into a new body and hope that the mission gets complete. Okay. And just to remind people, we did discuss this when we went through all the amazing uh, deities and gods and goddesses and whatever. But uh, we won't tell you the location, but Michael got an avatar here. Mm -hmm. And that's in the USA. That's all we're going to say, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to disclose any more information nope, on that. No, nope, we get... I don't need him showing up on my doorstep. <laughs> I'd like him showing like... up. I'd like him showing up on my doorstep. I don't need him showing up on my door. Yeah, yeah. Okay. When he shows up on your doorstep, he's going to be like, Merrily, Merrily, we need to talk. For me, it's like I'm sleeping in my bed, just getting back from a mission. And this is totally what he would do. He would loom himself over my bed, start his frilled wings and literally look at me and be like apollo me we need to talk <laughs> oh bad girl okay <laughs> all right so well you know i love michael so so he's in the <laughs> usa that's all we'll say and yeshua you did say he's here and classified you're not getting any information about that i, I am not and uriel you had mentioned in an earlier show that mm -hmm. And I think it was Germany the last time you saw him, right? Yeah. And there's several other angelics also incarnated down here, but you don't talk to them or know about them so much or anything that you're allowed to talk about, right? I still couldn't disclose their location, even if I wanted to. No, no, I don't mean for location. I don't want oh. the location disclosed. You know, I don't want their name here or whatever. I'm just continuing with the line of yes we have archangels and yes. stuff with avatars here walking yes. around doing their thing yeah that is correct so and the other thing is i was i remember I asked you a while back do they uh do those kind of angelics have to only come through hybrid parents or can they come through normal and you said um they have to incarnate in certain bloodlines Correct. It is best for them to reincarnate in certain bloodlines because of the energy spectrum. It's the same nope. thing that we explained before of why certain souls can only reincarnate into certain things. There are bloodlines that still exist of the fourth and third generation of man of the experiments down here, which means there are people with Nephilim blood down here. It is best for them to reincarnate in those in those bloodlines so that the the frequencies are better for them but i mean they are a few and far between so they don't have to but it is it is best for them too and are you allowed to say what certain bloodline the angelics can only incarnate into or not i okay. will not disclose that that's fine nor do i know all of them because I only know of one bloodline and that <laughs> that's it. And and that one's always classified, I know. Okay. So that's fascinating. So she got um subscriber got her answer in more. Thank you so much for that. Now you know the truth. Da, 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 as far as I have researched about the mystery that's never been clarified before. Uh, of how the Dracos actually arrived here. It's, wow. been a, it's been a big guessing game among researchers. The assumption is they came through a portal or were dumped here for the game because no one else wanted them. I know the Draconians have always argued that planet Earth is there because they were here first and they try and use that for leverage to claim ownership. Now, in our last session, you briefly said there are two groups of Draconians. Ones that ones that were already here in this universe this mm -hmm. is in our last episode and the more powerful ones that came through a portal to destroy atlantis so please first tell us about those two types of draconians and then we'll go into the truth of the dracos here okay so i think people are still getting confused so the term draconian means that they are of dragon lineage which means they have the ability to be an actual dragon. 
all right they have their breath weapon if if people want to call it that it's just a biological weapon uh, you're not going to spit out bubbles or anything okay like there's actual legality to why you have a defensive or offensive ability so um the draconians who are really powerful they are of a higher dimensional universe they are not from this universe and when i mean draconians i mean like the one that everyone knows okay the ones that are the head line of the dark draco factions the head of the line of the draconian empire the head of the line of the you know dark forces not all draconians are evil not all draconians fought with the uh dark council okay we've already gone over those who they are for the the draconians who fight for neutrality or fight with the octurians and uh, the andromeda councils i'm gonna leave it at that those ones because some of the neutral ones actually still they're part of the same species and part of the same group that came over here they came from another universe other universe they are not from this universe at all okay the they were talking about like the ones that are white and then you've got the some that are brown red green and a bluish color i believe uh they are pretty much all all in the same category now on saying that there are draconians and draco okay because we'll get into those terminologies in a minute uh they are there are ones that have evolved naturally in this universe okay the draconian phenotype is very prevalent in a lot of universes including hanova and they're not evil in Hanova innately. So, because we all have to follow those rules. Um, the ones that evolved here naturally are not the typical ones that you see. The Draconians from the other universe, they they don't really have fur. Uh, they don't have feathers, really. They are all scaled. The ones that came from this universe, on the other hand, that were naturally born here, they evolved and had a group that was towards the center of the universe. It's the very center. So time ran slowly. Very, very AI-based. Very AI-based. They, when they naturally evolved, they, they ended up going towards the center of the universe. They have feathers on some of them. They have fur on some of them. Uh, they do walk on all fours on for, for certain things, but they can also stand upright you know, and, and do have like the normal digits. Uh, when they started getting into technology, there is a group over there that was so AI based that they're more AI than, it's hard to describe. They're more AI than tissue. However, their technology is so advanced that the tissue of the AI is almost genetic. They they can do anything. I've met some of these ones. They the one that I met had like the typical draconian. The, they're usually black in uh, skin tone, uh, though they do come in several other colors. You know, your typical uh, dark blues. Some of them are red. Uh, some of them are green. But and and browns. Lots of lots of browns and. Are pans. these the Drazos? Huh? Have you heard the name Drazo? Yes, but those ones are a different subtype. Okay. So these ones, well, the one that I ran into, he had he had dark skin uh, for his hide. He does have fur that is a reddish color. And then he has these tentacles that come out of his back. There's like three of them on his back. And at first they look like spikes, but they will actually come out and they can actually integrate into certain technologies of theirs. And it just becomes like a hive mind once you once you link up to it. 
And they'll do anything that he wants at any given moment. When you feel them, they feel like real tissue, which is really weird. But they can also harden into almost like metal. And of course, they have like augments and stuff for your eyes and, and whatnot. So it's a lot of his species is very AI adept. You are not really going to find any draconians from the other universe really augmenting themselves that much because they have a philosophy of your body has to be pure so you, they might have augments you know that hook to them for like opening doors and doing all this other stuff you know receiving email and and things like that but you're not going to really see them a whole lot like if their arm gets chopped off they would rather regrow their arm which they have the ability to then have a cybernetic on it's it's kind of like a internal i don't like that sort of thing versus the the other draconians and there's a size difference the draconians from the other universe are way <laughs> bigger than the the ones from that are naturally formed here the ones that are naturally formed here are smaller uh they're skinnier they have more lanky body build than the draconians from the other universe so uh and do not get them mistaken for the crystic dragons for the draconians that are from the other universe you'll get slapped <laughs> yeah what really hard you'll get slapped like yeah, really hard <laughs> exactly so mm -hmm. uh yeah like i said there's many dragon types as so so there, there's those there are a lot of other sub draconian types that were naturally made in this universe and sub reptilian types that were naturally made in this universe uh when when the dr uh, draconians from the other universe came over here and the you know i i got to see some of their records when i was trying to figure out the universal war the only information I have that they had in their oldest Akashic, like not Akashic records, for their oldest records on their home planet with their queens was they came through a portal in the Draconian constellation. There's some sort of black hole there that's not really a black hole. And it, it is obviously a portal of some sort. Almost every universal being is terrified to go through there. They don't know what's on the other side, but they know that that's where they kind of originated from when they first came over here, which also kind of leads to, to why I had to research everything. Uh, however, there is other knowledge of what we call a universal dr a dump for uh, beta universes. And that's when that's when like either the immortal seven or the a whole bunch of crater councils get together and they're like, you know what would be great? We have this beta universe over here and we're just gonna we, we need more species, but the universe is just not evolving fast enough. We're gonna take a whole bunch of these uh these entities and just dump them right in. We'll see how they work out. And that's how the Shakral got here. <laughs> the the Draconians from the other universe got here. Uh, some of the uh, avian types, uh, the Katai. The Katai are cat folk. They are not Lyrians. Do not mistake them. Even though they do reside in, in Lyra, but um, it, they're, they're not the same. Huge difference in frequency and tallness and bulkiness. Uh, a lot of these species got dumped here. And this is where you started the. And no one war. else wanted. <laughs> it, it, uh, so there, I mean, there's rumors stating that they they weren't wanted, or they were mischievous and they were disobeying rules. Mind you, they come a lot of these come from universes that were fully developed and not beta universes. The Shakral are from Hanova itself. You know, the Katai were in a universe that was 100% developed, so they were in, like, 12th density. The Draconians that came from this universe are, like, 13th density. So, you know, if you mess up in a normal universe that is not beta, guess what happens? 
you kind of get demoted. <laughs> and we got them all. And you got them all. Now, the the full experiment was, okay, so these guys are problem makers. Let's dump them over here. Let's see if they help ascend the the universes more. But it, it kind of did the opposite because it was such a free will universe they weren't used to. They didn't have the strict rules and they went into survival for their own selves. And yeah. When, when, when they got here, okay, when a lot of these species got here, it was, oh my God, what the heck were you? Some people got along with others. But like the draconians, the chakrell, the uh sorry, uh some of the some of the beginner avian kin, you know, some of the uh other types of, of ETs that got dumped over here, they were not met with high you know, there was testing at first. There was like, is are these people trustworthy? Are they not trustworthy? You know, and some of the the higher vibration frequency ones because they were so used to strict rules you know we're trying to be nice and then of course like they've never really experienced a whole lot of backstabbing or being lied to you know and it just when you come from a, a non-free will universe you can go two ways you can either ease your way into your environment or you crash and these groups crashed hard very hard they're like oh we don't have to play by the rules anymore and we're more powerful than everyone else hmm we've never experienced these emotions before to the extent that we can let's roll with it mm -hmm. and that's how the major universal war began <laughs> like back towards the beginning of time and that that is so important the major universal war um was like really the toughest and that was early on right that it was started uh, early it on started? It's, it started early on at the very close to the beginning of the development of this universe and we're just now finishing it literally wow so the ones that came that you had to protect in atlantis in the first part right and ended up being that statue were draconians from the other universe that yes. were huge. well sort of sort there's of. been a lot of breeding between the species the the draconians from the other universe quickly realized that uh the draconians in this universe uh, also were not they were treated okay but they weren't treated very great uh they saw the potential in them for the ais and so that's why they they only infect their hybrid broodlings with the AI and, and all the experimentation because in draconian culture, the, the ones from the other universe, uh, family is everything to them. They do not mess with their own broodlings, okay? They specifically say, okay, this is DNA that I'm going to give to my, my group so they can do whatever they want with them. Once that decision is made, they have no, what's the word I'm looking for? They have no family ties to their experiments at all. They choose to just pretend they don't exist. Hmm. Fascinating. Anything else you want to add to that? Because that is the best uh, that I've ever heard on the details of okay. the different groups. And I know it can go on forever, but. Uh... Well, the. Dark Draco King Lucifer is a draconian. He has a lot of bloodline ties to uh, the the other universe. But a lot of his underlings that they basically took over a lot of the draconians and a lot of the reptilians in this universe. They basically made a kingdom out of all that. And this is including the the Dark Council, you know, the the Dark Draco faction. So the Dracos, uh, they're not dragons. They can't transform into dragons. They don't have that ability. They're more reptilian, like a hybrid between a reptilian and a draconian, but without all the benefits. So 
Um, I'm not saying that the Dracon the Dracos are experimental because they existed before they came over here in in many different parts of the, the universe. And and they're powerful in their own right. They're just not as powerful as the Draconians that took them over. So um so the Dark Council rules the majority of uh like the the Draco star system, some of the Orion star systems, you know, like they they had all of that territory, including more. Uh and a lot of their territory started at the center of the universe and reached outward, but they got driven out for the for the negative draconians. Wow. So the ones that attacked Atlantis were under the Dark Council ruling, which at that time I believe there was four kingdoms or five kingdoms of the Dark Council ruling that were on the Galactic Council. But uh so he ended up tainting mars and here and so we were fighting basically the dark draco councils and the draconian councils for the ones that were against you know neutrality and peace and where would you say all of that is right now well considering three of their the dark draco councils queens uh are well, one got assassinated and the other two relieved themselves of their position uh, and got tried for counts of war. That's a long, that's a long list. <laughs> uh, yeah, considering they're, they're older. Um, yeah, it, uh, I mean, the war is pretty much getting to be over at this point. Uh, that was actually my first disclosure coming out. So when I started five years ago, six, five years ago now, six years ago, something like that. Yeah. So a, a lot of stuff has happened. A lot of territories have changed. A lot of people have swapped from the evil side to the, the evil side to the good side, you know, with do rights, because the, again, the immortal seven came down here and was like, either you're doing this or, you know, you're going to be assimilated. So, yeah. It's like kids. Here's the here's the final consequence. Yeah. You want to do it? This is what's going to happen. Use your ultimatum, and if you're not going to do it, well, it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> that's that's so interesting. I know that um, Eliana Star Traveler, who's been a guest on my show, and I know you know her too, and she did a, a brief little uh, recent talk on when she went to the Akashic Records. She found, and this is just a couple sentences, um, quote, the Draco reptilians were originally actual lizard people, humanoid, not Draco. They came from another universe and they had encountered replicator technology ships mm -hmm. that actually crashed from a darker universe into a lighter universe. It might have been that black hole thing you're talking about. Those reptilians uh, came in contact with those replicator ships and it genetically mutated their DNA into the worst, what she says is the worst form of what they could evolve into. These reptilians' DNA are not dragons, solar dragons, or pure noble ones. They were just humanoid lizard beings. Through the replicator technology, their lizard DNA was mutated into the grace, aggressive Draco and the most aggressive option of what they would naturally evolve into over millions of years. These replicator ships had coordinates of how to come to our universe and they developed a genetic mutation to want to eat human flesh, end quote. So it's kind of, it's pretty similar to what you said, but a little different bend on it. So as for the Draconi or the Dracos stating that they owned Earth first, we've already gone through this in another, uh, in a previous one, I believe, short story. This planet was uncharted, un tamed and completely not quite on the maps yet mind you guys this was like millions of years ago okay even like beyond what you guys understand for the most part of you guys uh especially for scientists so there was a plant was a planet here called tiamat it was three times the size of earth <laughs> all right uh that is the one that they found when they came over here. There was a whole bunch of stuff that happened. 
whatnot. The planet got destroyed. It got hit by Nibiru, and which is why Nibiru has a poor atmosphere right now because it smacked a planet that was really big. Uh, and then they, the a lot of councils decided to recreate the planet here, which is now Earth, which is why we have Hollow Earth because. It's an artificially created planet with an artificial gravity system, which is the central sun in inner Earth. Which is common. Which, which, which is common. Yeah. So when the Draconians ended up coming back over here, because they left, you know, and there was, I guess the team got stranded here and whatnot, and they got taken off and then allowed back on here. It's a whole, it's a whole mess. Anyway, I, you know, some of them left. Uh, they claimed that they had this planet. Okay. They're like, oh, we, we claimed, you know, Tiamat in the name of Earth, which is why it was named Tiamat, because that's who the Draconians and Draco serve for their deity. Most of them, anyway. And so... There was this huge tiff and taff about, oh, well, no, your planet's gone. Like, it got destroyed. Uh, this one's been completely rebuilt. It is completely artificial, blah, blah, blah. They're like, no, we still own this. It. It's ours. So, apparently, in the archives, it's funny, because in the, in the Draconian archives, it's like, oh, we found planet Tetra 19, because that, that's actually the, the planet's identification on the star maps, old star maps. And they're like, it's it's ours. In the star maps, in the Sierrians, though, it, it's not that way. It is Tetra 19, but it is registered under the Sierrians and Octarians and a couple other council members who have stock in this planet for the creator councils. So, <laughs> you know, and, and Draconians, they they hold grudges really well. You know, any any reptile, they're reptoid, you know, they, they're very... Uh, if they're if they're not taught in the enlightened way they they can be quite centered on themselves a little bit so any wrongdoing to them they they hold grudges quite quite a lot um and so that's how that whole war started on earth <laughs> or today about earth because the draconians think that they rightfully have it and you know but they never filed the paperwork to to own it because by the time the paperwork got filed it was already destroyed you know they didn't have the greatest technology of everything back then and people have to understand that just because one draconian kingdom or draco kingdom because because they do have some sub branches has really good technology over here it does not mean that they share from all their all of their other neighboring uh cohort queens so you could have one draconian empire that has earth-like technology without being in part of the government's uh, space tech programs. Uh, and then you can have one over here that has crystal tech. Yep. So Apollo me for the last question of the day, let's deal with another uh, scientific theory that has been accepted, but I'm sure you wouldn't fully agree with it. And I want people to have your version of what we call the Big Bang or the or how creation started. So um, I know that you said in our last show that a universe zero and event horizon zero point for this experimental universe was how creation started here. So would you like to um, tell us what you really feel, how it started rather than just the simpler version of the big bang theory? That is a great question. And I'm going to explain it in my terminology that will be explained in or taught in the manual that uh, you and I are writing. So the question of how the Big Bang actually started. Well, we've already explained that there are councils outside of this universe, correct? Which means that there has to be energy and mass outside of this universe. 
And when a creator council ends up getting the ability to create a beta universe, it's basically like a basketball. I'm going to use the basketball method, or at least my basketball method. In that basketball, there is a defined amount of energy. We've already talked about how the oversoul has a certain amount of energy that it can fractal into everything. That is, it's the same principle for the creation of everything as well. It cannot overly get energy from quanta sharing outside of itself if it's a beta universe. If it's a normal universe, yes. Beta universe, not so much. So it has a, define, a finite amount of energy. And what happens is with every point of creation, whether it be a white hole, a black hole, every cell in your body, the atomic structures, the subatomic structures, everything comes down to frequency. Now, in that frequency mass would be the universe's consciousness. And that's going to be separate from the physical part of the, the creation. We'll, we'll, we'll put them two separately for right now. Now, with those frequencies, those frequencies eventually equal mass. Because everything starts with the golden and silver spiral and the prismatic convergence magnetism. I am not going to explain what those are. Those are in the manual in year one. So when you have that, think about it as an orb. And then those frequencies start to expand. They start creating their own frequency existence. And then they start interacting with other frequencies, creating different dimensions and planes. And our Big Bang theory that, that people have where everything was like just something and then it exploded basically is not entirely a lie. It's just not the whole truth. So think about how, you know, molecules and atoms are created. It's about all these little things coming together to make one big thing. So frequencies are very spread out. But once they start interacting with other things, such as polarities, magnetism, that sort of thing, when you start mixing frequencies together, it starts creating other forms of electric interaction and matter. And then, you know, all the shapes of those matters have to do with cymatics. And that's pretty much all you need for the basic building blocks of life. So our entire universe is in a sphere. Is there an edge to our universe? You're not going to really find it because it's in a sphere. And then once you hit the edge, you're just going to go like this. <laughs> so yes, it does have its edges, but it's very hard to kind of calculate those edges. You know, it is possible, and a lot of ETs have this technology. They already know the edges of the universe. They already know that they cannot go beyond them because you cease to exist after that. The programming just won't let you. So, yes, there is an edge to our universe. And all of the energy that's in the center mass of our entire universe is our golden and silver spiral, with along with the prismatic convergence magnetism. It is the breath and flow of all energy, both dark matter and light matter. <laughs> Huge quotations, people. And all of that will be explained in the manual, too, for what is silver energy and what is golden energy. All right. That is a good introductory explanation and adds a lot uh, of knowledge Thank you so much, Apalmy. And do you have any updates you would like to share at this time? You did mention that uh, your website will hopefully be up in January 2024 in a month. Anything else you'd like to mention? So we are launching Galaxy of Unity again, once again in January. Uh, the January date is unknown at this time. 
uh, we will also be on YouTube and we will also be on X, which was formerly known as Twitter and Facebook still, but we are moving our Facebook to a page instead of a group, just easier to manage. Um, and a lot of things have changed in structure and whatnot, but we are going to be doing the same disclosuring. There's just going to be a, a little bit of change. We're doing more podcasts than, than anything. After our analysis from last time, uh, a lot of you guys really didn't watch the actual videos. You guys were very interested in podcasts. We did pay attention. So for ease of access for you guys for our content, that's the main platform that we're going for. Uh, we will also have our YouTube for shorts and updates. And our website will have the videos for some of our videos. It will have the links to the podcast, to all of our crew, what we're about. And we're also teaming up with another company called Stellar Paranormal. That's uh, our producer's main company now. <laughs> so that's all about ghost hunting. And I will actually be applying the physics that I have to ghost hunting for more scientific research and data. <laughs> That's going to be very exciting. <laughs> that sounds really fun. And as you know, all these shows are also on podcasts, which are done at expense for your convenience. So thank you so much, Apollome, for answering these important scientific questions and queries that have I have never found a definitive answer and, and it really puts a lot of uh, expansive knowledge and wisdom to add to what we've already learned. And thank you, extended team out there for either listening and watching or both. Please share our channel with others and donate if you can, especially as we need funds for publishing these two manuals and continued related shows having to do with those manuals. We both exist on bare budgets right now and Apollomy gets paid nothing for missions every night. So please consider donating, which is super easy by going to my website, cosmicbrilliance.com, click on the banner that says gratitude donations and make a donation. Really appreciate it. We appreciate you and thank you so much. This is the last show of the year, 2023. And happy holidays, no matter what kind of holiday uh, it is for you. Uh, may multiple blessings come and let us all forge ahead, upwards and onwards. Thank you. <laughs>